Hey folks, this is immigration attorney Hassan Abdullah hailing from the San Francisco Bay Area and I'm preparing this video to discuss a very important topic which is VAWA petitions. So first of all, um, I'm going to go over a little bit of the basics. What is a VAWA petition? What is, what is VAWA in the first place? Well, the VAWA stands for the Violence Against Women's Act and this was passed in 1994 uh, through the efforts of Joe Biden who was a senator at the time. Joe Biden, as you know, is a uh, Vice President under Barack Obama, and um, he, you know, you know, good for him that he was instrumental in in this um, law, because what this law, a part of this, a provision in the VAWA uh, Violence Against Women's Act, is that um, people who have been victims of abuse during their marriage uh, to a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident can apply for a green card on their own rather than depend on their abusive spouse. And this has really solved a very serious problem because people would choose to stay within their abusive marriage um, because they depend on that spouse to sponsor them. And since before this law, there was no option for someone like that. And they might have to suffer. Um, and it would put them in danger also because, you know, there are situations where an abusive spouse can, can even kill their spouse in turn, because of the, the degree of abuse. So it's important that people have an option to get out of that situation safely and also um, not have to worry about their immigration status. So it's a great piece of law. I'm going to just discuss some of the basics of the um, how you qualify for a VAWA petition and um, I'm also going to discuss complications as well that you know commonly asked questions that uh, people in this situation might have. Uh, which are not always, you know, necessarily addressed. If you do some research online, you might not find the answer really quickly. So I'm going to go over some of the common issues as well that 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 uh, present themselves in representing VAWA uh, applicants. Um, and even before I go into some of the criteria, I want to talk about what if you're not married to a, because this is probably on your mind. What if you're not married to a U.S. citizen uh, or a permanent resident? and you're a victim of abuse in your marriage or if you're not even married and you've been a victim of abuse in your marriage well there's a U visa petition a U visa petition is for someone who's been a victim of a crime so if you've been a victim of domestic violence that is one of the enumerated crimes for U visa petitions and you can apply for a U visa petition if you've been a victim of crime um, such as domestic violence and so that is where U visa picks up, where VAWA leaves off. So keep that in mind as an alternative. Now, um, going over some of the basic criteria, you have to have a relation. You have to show that there's a relationship to the abuser. So by that, you can prove that with a marriage certificate, um, and you also have to show that you're you, you actually were married to that person legally. So <coughs> you can prove that with um, <clears throat> if you've already been married previously you also have to show that you were eligible to be married so you have to sh have your divorce decree as well from your previous marriage if you were previously married another thing you have to show is the immigration status of the abuser and of course to show that you can have um, their permanent resident card if they're permanent residents um, I-130 petition if they ever petitioned for you that's proof that they're a permanent resident or a US citizen you can have their <coughs> excuse me, naturalization certificate. You can have their um, passport or a birth certificate if they're born in the U.S. Another thing that you can um, you have to show is bona fide marriage to the um, to the uh, abuser. So if you've had kids together, obviously that's very clear evidence of a bona fide marriage. You can just show birth certificates. Uh, you can get affidavits, declarations from other people who are aware of the the fact that you're a married um, photographs that you've had together you know as a married couple and um, you can also have um, notes cards you have to be created here um, and also proof of joint property another thing is you have to show residence with the abuser prove that you resided together again photographs can be one of the pieces of evidence that support this but you, you should have more than that. So you can have mailing correspondence that have been sent to your address, uh, joint tax returns, 
Um, children's school records if you have kids who are going to school um, and coming home to the same place where you live and showing that you have a family unit together. All of this shows that there's joint residence. Uh, and of course your affidavits and declarations will support that too. Then you've got documents that establish that you've been a victim of extreme cruelty in your marriage. So that could include your declaration, personal declaration, declarations from other people as well who are going to give their own affidavits supporting that you were a victim of abuse. And of course letters from therapists and, or someone who's a mental health professional is very important. And you know, we've been for clients. We've get we've gotten things of varying various degrees of quality. You definitely should have something from a qualified expert who at least has um, something like a master's in social work. Doesn't necessarily have to be a PhD or or a physician who who has evaluated you, but someone who's a qualified, licensed professional should do that. And the letter should indicate what happened to you and how the. The, the abuse has created some kind of an impact on you and you may have developed some kind of anxiety disorder, depression, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, etc. Um, medical reports, photographs of injury as well, um, things like that. You can also show uh, if you've been prescribed medication for any condition that you developed as a result of the abuse. You can also show that. Uh, and then finally you have to show that you're a person of good moral character and that can include affidavits of good moral character, police clearance certifications, court documents showing, uh, you know, court uh, cert uh, clearances as well, showing that you have no criminal record. So those are just some of the things that you need. Now the thing about a VAWA case itself is that, you know, there's cases that are not very strong. You might not have been physically abused. You might have not have any signs of that. Um, the abuse might just be ongoing. Uh, or you might not be a normal, you might also be um, what we call as a, a thin shell plaintiff, a thin egg, egg shell plaintiff or a thin skull plaintiff, meaning that you're extra sensitive to begin with because you have some pre-existing conditions, psych psychological or physical. And while a normal person might not perceive a high level of abuse based on the experience that they had, you in particular might experience, might have experienced a higher level of abuse. Also, you might not have gone to a therapist. You might have self-medicated yourself through alcohol use or some drug dependence. We have to be creative sometimes in cases that are not really well documented or well supported. And that's where, you know, definitely a good attorney is going to help you um, in, in such a case. And I think in general, you know, you would do yourself an injustice if, if you didn't have a professional hand when you're about a petition. It's not that it's impossible to get this done without an attorney, in, in strong cases especially, but um, it's always best to have uh, a competent counsel represent you. Now, um, I was going to, like I said, I was going to discuss some of the um, frequently asked questions, you could say. So let's go through some of them. Um, if you divorced your spouse, understand that you have to file for vow within two years of the divorce. So the clock is ticking if you actually got divorced. You've got to file this vow petition. If two years have passed and you apply for vow, it'll be too late. Uh, annulment is a problem. So if you had an, an annulment, then your marriage was never valid in the first place and you wouldn't be able to apply for VAWA necessarily. If your spouse died, you can apply for a widow petition. You might not even need to do a VAWA petition. If you remarry, it's not really going to be a problem. If you're still in the marriage, it's not going to be a problem either. Um, bigamy. What if your spouse, what if you were already married and you didn't properly get divorced and you got married again? then you, you're not going to be able to count that time uh, as abuse towards your VAWA case. If your spouse was previously married and you didn't know about it, then the bigamy might be, um, will not be a bar to your VAWA claim. Your children can also be included in your VAWA case. And um, also understand that if costs are somewhat prohibitive, prohibitive uh, there are some organizations that may help people, but usually they're very backlogged. And so it might be, you know, you, you might need to hire an attorney because, you know, you might not have time to wait for the very long period of time that some of these nonprofits have in their valid cases. And another thing is you can apply for fee waivers for your adjustment of status. So there are some options there if you have financial issues. So that's pretty much uh, the whole thing that I wanted to go over, the various questions and, and the various, you know, what VAWA is about. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.